All right, we are recording, my brother. So, hey guys, it's Casey and Brandon here. Hey guys. Hi. Um, with a special, really just um, treat for everybody. So, um, I know a lot of us just got back from um, the Fearless event with you, Brandon, in Atlanta, which was absolutely amazing. You know, there were so many people that, you know, we've been to so many events, we've done so many things, and just the comments, um, the standing ovation for you, just the heartfelt love that went out and just people didn't want to stop cheering um, just for all the value that you offered. And I know a lot of us are already, you know, going to do some group coaching with you. Um, and just even that's a special, a special thing too, uh, as far as with group and um, just the, the love that you gave though, and just the difference that people um, walked away with the type of, of knowledge that you gave us from the head to the heart and the assessment for people to really identify their blind spots or what might be getting in their way. So I've had the privilege of working with you for the last year and um, everybody knows I just sing your praises. And so I'm not going to take away any more of your time so that you can really um, present the, the goodness that you have. And then of course, Sunday we'll be back and just some really great, incredible offers. I'm willing to pony up um, a, a good amount as well too just for people to really experience um, what I have with you because there's nobody that I would rather be in my organization and sharing um, information the way you share it of uh, just really being able to connect and love people and have joy in a journey in this network marketing business so without further ado this loving husband father just friend to all he eats heart center man Brandon Barber take it away and show us what you got my brother well, I appreciate you trusting me with this information to your team. And guys, for Casey, I mean, she's created this whole plan behind this, just so you know. She created this plan for you guys. So there's this entire plan that you're not fully going to be aware of until you watch today and Sunday that is really a massive, massive gift from her heart to you. So she's talked to me about delivering some of this information to you, but Man, let's give Casey, you're going to really, you guys already think she's awesome, I know, but I love her story um, so much about where she was and seeing where she's gone and now seeing the crazy, just outrageous, authentic, like raw person she is today is really quite, it's not only fun and cool, but it's so amusing. She is so amusing. So I, I like it. It's, it's awesome because she was, she had a stick up her butt when we first met for sure. And she was frustrated about a lot of stuff. So it was a big stick. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't change it. She did it. I was just help a lot. I facilitated a little bit of it inside of her along the way, but it's, it's absolutely my pleasure to work with you guys. I'm, I want to cover a little bit today, kind of just give you what I've seen over the years that get people stuck and hold them back. Listen, we can talk about success, guys. We can talk about making lots of money. We can talk about getting to the next level, but none of it means anything unless you're really enjoying the moment. Unless you're having a lot of passion day to day, like what's the reason, right? I know a lot of people that are absolutely lights out successful in your business, in your company, and making a ton of money and killing it, but they don't necessarily have the excitement and the passion. They don't have the fulfillment. So you might say, I'll take that without the fulfillment, but I think if you really, really dig in, you won't, right? Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. So I wanna talk about living with purpose and passion. Like literally, why, why not create success in your business, make a lot of things and a lot of magic happen, but do it with purpose and passion. So today I wanna talk about just these three mistakes that I see show up on a day-to-day -day basis after working with people for 18 years, direct marketers, um, network marketers, direct sales professionals, what, what I see are three mistakes that hold people back. So let's dig in. But the first thing I want you to do is one of my favorite sayings is success is a conscious choice. So do me a favor and pick your right hand up. So yeah, that's you guys, everybody, your right hand, and wrap it around and pat yourself on the back and say good choice for being here. Give yourself a little extra like 
rub and hug too there, right? Good choice for being here. Yes, it is a good choice. Choice. Success is a conscious choice. Happiness is a conscious choice. Fulfillment is a conscious choice. So good job for being here. Good job for listening to this. Now, like I said, I'll just talk a little bit about me. I won't get into a lot of detail. Um, we've literally worked with over half a million people over the last 18 years, helping them with Achievement, we talked about achievement, so creating more success in their business, making more money, doing all that, but the thing I'm the most proud of is fulfillment. Creating massive amounts of fulfillment, finding joy in their journey, finding passion in what they do, being authentic, tapping into that authenticity. That's my favorite part of what we do. And that's the thing that I think I bring more than anything else. It's not, hey, let's just get you to the next level. It's, let's get you to the next level and Find joy in every moment along the way. Like, why does it have to be full of anxiety and frustration? Why not find more peace of mind along the way? So I've had the privilege to do this, and it all stemmed from years and years of my own struggles. Not that I don't still have struggles. I do, because I'm human. But years and years of struggle with my own anxiety, my own frustrations, my own achievement um, without the fulfillment. So I'm, I'm here to bring that to you guys today and to give you a little bit more of that. So let's talk about, before I dig into this, the three, we're just gonna dig into three mistakes that I see people, that I see entrepreneurs struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. So here's mistake number one. And the mistake, the massive mistake that I see is that, or let's do massive mistake number three. We'll, we'll count it down three, two, one. How's that? So the third one I see is that people rebel against their own cause. So let me tell you what I mean by that. You have a cause, maybe like it's January, it's January, it's January 3rd, right? You maybe set some goals, some objectives, some causes that you want to make happen. Maybe it's weight loss. Maybe it's something in your business. Maybe it's that next level in your business. Maybe it's more money. Maybe it's a, it's a house. Maybe it's more peace of mind. Maybe it's all of those things. But what if I told you there's something inside of your subconscious that may rebel against the very cause, that very thing that you want to have happen. So you want to have peace, you want to have joy, you want to, have, you want to have more success, but there might be something that rebels against it. Because here's what we know. 90% of the population, half a million entrepreneurs over the last 18 years have one thought process that says, I do not want to be controlled. Don't control me. Don't tell me what to do. And you might say, yeah, that's me. I don't want to be controlled or told what to do. Why is that a problem? It's a problem when you tell yourself what to do and you don't follow through. So let's say my cause is to drop 25 pounds, which it is. But I walk past the Starbucks coffee or tonight I walked in my door and my wife is making pancakes and sausage. And I'm like, oh my gosh, pancakes? Like, I love pancakes for dinner. It's my favorite thing in the world. So I walk through the doors. And she's like, I'm all, you made banana pancakes. She's all, yep. And my brain instantly said, you can't have that. You're having a shake. And this thought process said, screw that. I'll have as many pancakes as I want. Don't tell me what to do. So how many of you get into it? Now I didn't eat the pancakes, right? Because I have some techniques and tools to use and I'm going to have shake but uh i didn't have i didn't have pancakes but there's part of me that doesn't want to be controlled and restricted by what i can and can't eat and somebody's commenting um yeah <laughs> gotcha okay what who are you telling me to watch you oh you know like yeah watch me like yeah you don't control me you know it's watch, like, me. watch me <laughs> I'll have, I'll have as many pancakes as I want. So think about it for success for you guys. I want to make more money. I want to create more success in my business, but I need to schedule in some of my activities in my day, right? I need to just put some of those things in. And listen, I don't care what system you use. You can have, Casey has a system. She works hard. Her system is definitely a little bit more abstract than other people's systems, but it's a system. I love it. She works, you work, you work based on the moon and the sun and different energies. And I think that's awesome because it's a system, but you still work hard. So what happens is we end up 
rebelling against the very disciplines that are gonna make us successful. So watch this, this is interesting. If there's anything in your life that you have to do, it feels like an obligation, or you have to do it perfectly, or you're afraid. So in other words, if your motivation is obligation, perfection, or fear, I have to, I must, I should, I need to, I ought to, I'm supposed to. Obligation is I have to, perfection is I should. Fear is if I don't then, right? If you're driven by that motivation at all, 100% it's gonna make you tired. You're gonna get absolutely fatigued. And then if you get fatigued, that's when the rebel shows up. I'm not gonna be controlled or told what to do by this have to, I have to, I should, I must. But then something interesting happens. When you rebel, you avoid it, or you don't do it, or you procrastinate it. You don't work it. What happens when you avoid it? What happens when you stop? What happens when you procrastinate? What's the emotion you get? It's guilt, right? So you feel guilty, and then what do you do with guilt? You're like, I feel guilty, so you recommit and do what you have to, must, and should until the cycle continues. So I want you guys to look at this cycle for a minute, and I want you to think about some of the day-to-day -day activities in your business or in your health, how much of this is, fits into this cycle? I'm obligated to lose 25 pounds. I should, I'm supposed to, I need to. And it makes me tired thinking about it. And then I rebel against it and then I avoid it. So I eat bad and then I feel guilty and go back and I watch that cycle. I did that cycle all of 2018. So how many of you do this cycle? You live in your, whether it's your health, it's your business, this is the cycle that it goes in. And you try to force yourself, you try to make yourself do it, I gotta do it, I, and it just creates more of this cycle. And what, what are some of the tasks that fall into this? Like what are they? Some of the stuff that might be really helpful, some of the stuff that's gonna create some of those goals. So there's a different way. The different way is doing things because you want to get to and choose to. Because when you choose to do something, like I want to do it, it creates some energy. And then instead of rebelling, you embrace it. Instead of avoiding it, you take action. You're free of guilt. And then you don't need to recommit because you're already committed. That's a different cycle. So how do you change this? It starts with language. So notice when you say have to, must, should, need to, ought to, supposed to. And I don't want you to say, yay, I get to, because if I walked in the door and went, yay, I'm looking at banana pancakes, my favorite thing, and I'm like, yay, I get to have a shake instead, my brain's gonna go, I'm not that stupid. Like, I'm not an idiot. The banana pancakes are gonna be better. But here's what I say. I want to have a shake because. And that's the key. I want to because. That's the different language. And I want to because I've had huge stomach problems over the last two months, like massive stuff where I've been in the hospital and I'm like, I don't want to end up back there. I want to eat the shake because I don't want that pain. I want to have the shake because I want to drop those 25 pounds. I want to feel healthier. I want to feel better. I want to because. So your business, why do you want to work your business? Why do you want to do the day-to-day -day activities? Why will you get into the day-to-day -day stuff? Because why? I want to because. It's a combination of language. You think about the power of language. Like how many of you have ever been starving? Now I know you haven't actually been starving. Maybe somebody out there has. You got lost somewhere in the wilderness and you were starving, but you've never been starving. But you say starving and it causes you to eat way too much. Or you use the words, how many of you have been stabbed in the back, right? And you really weren't stabbed in the back, but use those words, but it's just somebody said something you didn't want them to. So. Our language is important, right? The language we use is important. And then physiology, right? Physiology is a big part of this. So when you use your language and your body and your focus to change how you view something, you can look at all the things in the world that you have to, must, and should do, and they can turn into a want to, get to, and choose to, just like that. Now, I'm gonna keep digging in, because what I see all the time is that this is a study that's done by the University of Michigan. Distractions and interruptions. How many of you get a lot of distractions? In fact, if you look at this, the average person gets one interruption every eight minutes. That's seven in an hour, 50 or 60 a day. The average interruption takes five minutes. That's four hours of a workday. But here's the kicker. 
80% of those interruptions are typically rated as little or no value. So that's three hours that are wasted a day. Here's, what, here's another study I saw the other day that we check our phones literally 120 times a day. So 120 times looking at your phone, if 80% of those have no value, where's our interruptions? How, how are we really spending our day? Now, if it's something you absolutely love to do and you want to do, I'm going to tell you do it. Like if you love picking up your phone and going through stuff, more, more power to you. If you love it, if it's great. But most of the time I see these distractions and interruptions showing up because we're avoiding doing the things that we have to do. It's just like, let me find some creative avoidance. But it's only because you're welcoming these distractions to avoid the very things that are going to create success in your life. So listen, I don't, I'm not going to say you have to follow one system. Follow your system. Follow what works for you as long as you're following some kind of a system. As long as you're following something that works for you so that you work effectively and you're not stuck in all this wasted time. Here's the other thing I see people do. I see this multitasking craze that happens and people end up multitasking like crazy. Like they're doing multiple things. And if you look at this, the study done by UCLA, it says if you check your email while performing another creative task, task. so if you do two creative tasks in the moment, your IQ drops by 10 points. That's the equivalent of not sleeping for 36 hours. Somebody's got a chat here. Um, so somebody's just saying, I relate to this. Yes, yes. Hey guys, how are you? There's Jessica and Lindsay. Hey Angel, what's going on? We're talking soon, I think, right? But um, sorry, I digress for a minute. I, I forget, like we're on Zoom, are we on Facebook Live? Like what? how much interaction are we supposed to have here? But I love it, so cool, keep, keep chatting. This multitasking stuff, I'm not talking about chewing gum and walking. I'm not talking about driving and listening to music. I'm talking about two creative tasks. We know that there's really not a lot of effectiveness that happens when you multitask. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show you guys. So here's some of the damages of multitasking. Drop, you, you, you creates fatigue, disables problem solving. The last two are the big ones, I think. Mental burnout. Like absolute mental burnout. All because we're avoiding doing the things we have to do. And anxiety and depression. So watch, I'm gonna give you this tool to do. So those of you that have a piece, if you're driving and listening to this, I don't know if you are, but you're not gonna be able to do this or please don't. But if not, take out a blank piece of paper. Even though you, if you've done this before, do it again. Take out a blank piece of paper and I want you to draw two lines right here. So just like it is on this screen. So a top line and a bottom line. And then, Here's what I'm gonna have you do. So go ahead and grab a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what kind of, just any piece of paper is fine. Like I have a cardboard box right here I can do it on. Um, but I want you to do this. I want you to write in a minute, cause I'm gonna time you. So I'm gonna have you write multitasking is a thief in a minute, not yet. You're gonna literally write multitasking is a thief. I'm gonna time you. So wait to do this. And then, and what I'm having you do right now is single task. So then after that, you're gonna write a number under each letter. These don't line up. I don't know what happened to my font here, but something went on. So these don't line up right now, but there's literally 20 letters. And so all there is is just a number for every letter. So what I'm gonna have you do when I tell you is you're gonna single task because you're gonna do multitasking as a thief. And then you're gonna write the number under each letter. And there's 20 letters. Again, don't, don't, you don't want it to look like it looks like right here. Normally the multitasking is a thief goes all the way across, but there's 20 letters, trust me. So when I, I'm gonna time you. So all you're gonna do is write the top line, multitasking is a thief, and then a number under each one. You're gonna single task by doing letters and then numbers, and then I'm gonna time you. So hang on a sec, and then when I get your, to your time, I want you to write your time down and see how long it takes you. So on your mark, get set, go. Some of you will be fast at this. Some of you won't be so fast, but it's okay. And again, once you're done, let's, I'll say times and then you can write down your time. So we're at 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 
36, 38, 40. I'll stop there. If you're not, if you have not done yet, just write 40 down. Now, here's what I'm going to have you do next. Somebody, somebody sent a chat. I want to see if they're good. So, uh, okay, cool. Looks like everybody's okay. All right. Next thing I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you multitask. So I'm going to have you do the M, then the number one, then the U, then the number two, then the L, then the number three, and all the way down until you've done letter, number, letter, number, letter, number, all the way down. Okay. So you're going to multitask and I'm going to time you on your mark, get set, go. Okay, we're at 20. Twenty-five, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight. Just write your time down. Forty, forty-two, forty-four, forty-six, forty-eight. 38, 32, 34, 36, 38, 50, 52, 54, 56, and 58, and we'll stop at a minute. So if you're not done, just write a minute. So some things happened in that. Number one, it took longer, right? It took way longer. So multitasking takes longer. But we multitask because we think it's going to help speed things up. So somebody said something here, so, <laughs> okay. Somebody said horrible. And they even spelled horrible wrong because they were multitasking. So there were errors. How many of you had errors show up? So it took longer. Oh, Casey wants to say something, go ahead. I can, like just forget how to spell. Like I can't even remember how to spell. Like I have to even go reference because my brain can't remember what, how to even spell or what number's next. <laughs> multitasking. And then it creates this, probably for most of you, stress. The second one was way more stressful. Took longer, more error rates, more stressful. So go ahead and breathe, because some of you didn't even breathe through that process either, right? <laughs> so it's time for some breath work. We could do that. Kate, Casey could walk us through that. But yeah, it's totally stressful. That's multitasking. So we multitask because we're avoiding doing the things that we have to do, all the things we have to do. What if there was a choice in there? What if you did have a choice? What if you really had options? But it starts by you viewing that you have options and you seeing it differently. And you know this, guys, more than anything else, this concept of flow, being in the now, being in the present moment, that's when you get 10 times more done, that's when things are more effective, that's when you have this beautiful chemical reaction in your brain where there's the right amount of serotonin, there's the right amount of dopamine, there's the right amount of norepinephrine. There's like this perfect recipe in your brain when you're in the moment in flow. You guys know the power of being present, being in the moment. But all of this came from, remember, not wanting to be controlled or told what to do. So flow is this beautiful place. If you've ever read the book, The uh, Rise of Superman, it talks all about flow and adventure athletes and why they do what they do, they do what they do to get in flow, to get present. Because our brain forces them to be 100% present. So whether you're climbing a rock wall without a rope, like I don't know if some of you have seen the, the documentary, um, uh, what is it, uh, Solo something. Uh, anyways, it's about the story of a guy who literally, Alex, I forget his last, I wanna say Hoffman, but that's not right. Alex Hoffman is somebody else. But his name is all Alex. Um, I forget his name, but he literally climbed El Capitan 3,000 feet above the ground without a rope. So why do people do with that? Why do people engage in stuff like that? It puts them in flow, it puts them in this great chemical space that it's awesome and it lasts for days, sometimes weeks later. So these people aren't adventure or they're not adrenaline junkies, they're flow junkies. You can be in flow too when you stay present, 
single task. And we're addicted to multitasking. I watch my kids and it's like TV and if it's literally decreasing IQ points, all stemming from that, right? Free solo. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Joe or Shanna, one of them. Awesome show. Okay. Mistake number two, and this is a big one. They forget to enjoy the journey. Like how many of you got ma some material somewhere and you said, let's get to the next level. Let's go make it happen. And let's find massive amounts of joy in the journey. Or is it just, let's go achieve. Let's just go make it happen. Let's just go figure out how to get to that next thing. And we create this thing called, uh, where we build castles in the sky, right? We, we think about something and we imagine it. And I know the law of attraction is a lot about creating it beforehand, right? There's the stories of Disney and Disney creating all of what Disney is today in his head before it actually happened. And listen, I totally am on board with that. And the law of attraction becoming a reality. But here's what I see that is sort of a, a misnomer or it's not presented like this. When we spend too much time in castles in the sky, so healthy, normal, wonderful, incredible people build castles in the sky. Neurotics furnish the castle. Psychotics move in. In other words, if you've already created what you want and you've already bought it and built it and moved in and spent all this quality time, and then in reality, you come back to the here and now, and the here and now looks like this, because you want what's over here so bad. Listen, if you're creating castles in the sky and you come back to reality and it's still absolutely incredible and you love every moment, keep doing what you're doing. But for a lot of people, they spend all this time in fantasy and they come back and reality doesn't look awesome. It looks like this. It looks painful, it looks hard, it looks difficult. And all the work to get from here to your dream looks painful and difficult. So I just tell you, if you're fantasizing it all and spending time there and you come back to reality and you're good with what is and you love what, with what is and you're spending time in the moment, keep doing it. I know people that do it. Casey's one that I know can create that vision and come back to reality and still love it. I have this tendency to spill all this castle in the sky and I come back and go, oh, I'm frustrated because it's not quick enough. It's not happening fast enough. It should be. If any part of you says it should look like this, it should be like this, you've probably created this concept of expectation because of the castles in the sky or what we call an amygdala hijack. It's when reality is different from what you've created. So you create an expectation, somebody's supposed to behave a certain way, people are supposed to do this, things are supposed to look like this, and you come back to reality, and it doesn't look that way in your brain, the amygdala part of your brain says there's a threat and it releases the cortisol and adrenaline. So you go into fight, flight, or freeze. So maybe it's an appointment. Somebody was supposed to show up to an appointment. You had an expectation they were going to be there and they didn't show up. You have an amygdala hijack. You go on vacation and you expect the vacation to look a certain way and it doesn't. You have an amygdala hijack. It'll cause suffering. So I, I, I've, I told the story when I was at the event about me going to, going to uh, planning this big trip in Hawaii, we're going to do this big horseback trip, horseback ride with my, my family and my kids. And we're going to go back. And I created the envision in my head. It was going to be so awesome. It was going to be so incredible. And we got there and it was raining and I had an amygdala hijack and then my horse wouldn't move. And then I had an amygdala hijack and my kids were miserable. And it was raining more and we got back to this waterfall and we couldn't go to the waterfall. And I was suffering because I was having an amygdala hijack. I was suffering in Hawaii. That's a pretty crazy place to suffer. But how many of you suffer in your life right now? You have an amazing life. If you look around you, you have really incredible things, but you suffer. Because you're not where you think you're supposed to be. Because you've spent so much time envisioning the way it's supposed to be. So how many of you are suffering financially? You're like, oh, I should be making more money. I should be making $100,000 a month. What's wrong? And you suffer and you're making more than 99.9% .9 of the world. So it's interesting where we can suffer because of our expectations. And listen, it all stems from this focus on outcome. If you look at these two sets of pictures, 
this typical vision board or dream board, right? The outcome is the stuff at the top. The process is the stuff at the bottom. Make sure your dream boards, both here in your head and physically, embody both the activity and the outcome. Because you're not going to get anywhere in this business without people. Guys, you just can't. Most, most vision boards I see don't have people on them. They have a bunch of things. They have a bunch of outcomes. They have a bunch of awards or rewards or a bunch of the, the arrival, right? When I get there then. And make sure you're including the process because the process is, a, is every day. It's the journey, right? So make sure you're including both of these things. If you built castles in the sky, you don't need to be lost. That's where they should be. Now put foundations underneath them. So those, ca those, fa those castles in the sky, I love that you can create them, but come back to reality. Let's build it brick by brick and love the process. That's doable. A lot of people get stuck in this, this happiness formula. This is actually um, a Tony Robbins. He, when the first time I was given this three and a half years ago, it blew me away. And I was at a Tony Robbins event and he said, I've spent my entire life teaching achievement and people to achieve and get there and get there. And then he said something came up in my life where I found that it was never good enough. He said, I realize it's because I had this happiness formula. And here's the happiness formula that he used to follow. And this is the happiness formula I used to follow. And it's the happiness formula that most achievers follow. You'll be happy when your life conditions equal your expectations. And if they don't, you're unhappy. What's the problem with this formula? One of the problems is we have to arrive there to be happy. The other thing is, once your life conditions meet your expectations, what do we do as overachievers? We raise our expectation. And then when life conditions meet our expectations, then what do we do again? Raise our expectations. And you keep going and going and going until you're in an elevator, right? Casey, I'll let Casey, for those of you who don't know her story, she could tell you the story. Um, but I love that story. I really do. It's so human, right? But it's, she was just at a place where I was I'm just done. You yeah. came off me, so uh, go ahead. I can share, you know, the story now and um, for those of you that were at the event, but you know, here it is, um, you know, I've hit Isagenix Millionaire and I mean, just, you know, you have the money, you have amazing, amazing husband, I have incredible friends, um, you know, great, great family and all these things, but it was, it's like, because there's always more, right? Or there should always be more, more, more. And I was just stuck in that state of it never being enough to then where my health gave out. And I was on, you know, so many pain pills and steroids and just putting on weight and drinking too much and muscle relaxers. I mean, to the point you like where I lost my bladder control, I mean, keen myself and I just remember being in an elevator <laughs> and this was uh, before we started coaching and but that was it my dog's crying he's like that's such a sad story mom um but it's like that's to the point of my unfulfillment that I had just was just numbing myself just feeling like oh my gosh like where do I even go from here what's next and then trying to have to posture or put on this facade um you know I just felt really unauthentic in so many ways but it was because of this happiness formula and all these expectations that I had just been putting around myself and I was just in such a, a low place but from an outsider looking in it should have looked like all, all the glory um, but it was because I never allowed myself to really fall in love with the process and joy in the journey and it was just never enough and always needing to be more 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 and it's like my body physically gave out my soul I mean just everything and so you um, God just coaching with you is just the greatest decision I ever made <laughs> thank you I love you <laughs> Well, the cool thing is you let go of this, right? You let go of, it's like, it's I, the comments of it's all handled. And it's like, life is happening for me. It's not happening to me. I don't have to keep achieving to be enough. I don't have to keep doing more and more. What you end up doing is not achieving to be happy, but you end up happily achieving when you let go of expectations. And it's tough because the overachiever, the overachiever in me went, well, if I don't have expectations, what will I do? Just sit around, watch Netflix all day? No, I end up happily achieving instead of I have to, to be enough. And this can be a self-esteem thing for sure. It was for me. I need to be enough, so I got to go out and achieve at high levels. 
what's cool is when you let go of expectations, you actually do achieve, but for different reasons. Not to be enough, because you want to. And then when you want to, you have options, you have choices. And that cycle, it literally becomes a choice and you just end up doing stuff and then the law of attraction works so much better for you. So think about this. When you have expectations, they make you critical. And I'll give you an example. Find three things in your room, in the room you're in right now that you can be critical of. Or something in my room or something with me or I comb my hair today. I don't even know. I can't even see. Like be critical of something. Maybe you're critical of what I've shared with you. You're like, that's stupid. I don't know. Find three things to be critical of. Maybe you can even find something in yourself. So go ahead. There's something in there. Like my desk is a mess. I have all these cups here. Like <laughs> I haven't taken all my, my shake glasses down from the last two days. So they're all sitting here and now they're like, man, it's stuck on there good. Like getting that stuff off is going to be tricky. Like odd something like, look, I didn't even take the time to go downstairs and I don't know, find something to be critical of. Expectations. Expectations make us critical. Think about your significant other. You'd be critical of them. If you have a teenager, find something to be critical. I mean, expectations create criticisms. But here's the game changer. Something you guys can start practicing tonight. Every time you find something you're critical of, find something to appreciate in it. So right now, the very things you were just critical of, find something to appreciate in the very thing you were critical of. These cups right here represent the fact that I've been disciplined over the last two, well, week. I've been disciplined over the last week, taking care of my body and drinking shakes. That's what it represents. The mess on my desk says it represents the hard work I've been putting in. What can you appreciate in the very thing you were critical of? And what if that's the new, your new mantra, if you will, or your new go-to? The minute you're critical, you find something to appreciate in that next minute. So you trade your expectations for appreciations. You literally give up your expectations and you bring an appreciate, appreciation into it. It's a game changer, right? And it's different than what's taught out there. I know the norm is like, go achieve, go achieve, create expectations, expect it. Listen, certainty is important. I think having certainty is critical when you're going and making things happen. But too much certainty can almost be a detriment, right? Because it's the uncertainty that creates a lot of the magic in our lives. So I love having certainty about things. Just I can't make it so important that it's more important than appreciating and finding gratitude. Because gratitude will take you to a whole new level. And those of you, I'm probably preaching to the choir. You guys already know this. So it's a tool for you. Okay, let's jump in for sake of time. I don't want to take you too much longer. You guys get this. The first, the number one mistake, the thing that holds people back more than anything else is they just blindly follow their habits. Here's the truth. Bad habits have way more traction than good intentions. So it doesn't matter what intentions you have for 2019. It doesn't matter how much you visualize them. It doesn't matter how strong you want it to happen. It doesn't matter how much you pray or hope or dream. Your habits have more traction than all of that stuff. Not because you're broken. Not because there's something wrong with you. Not because you're a loser. You're not. It's because you're human. And our brains work in patterns. And so our bad habits, they run the show. They just do. And here's what we know about bad habits. I don't know why that's just bad habits, bad habits are there. Your net worth to the world is usually determined by what remains after your bad habits are subtracted from your good ones. This is a quote from Benjamin Franklin. I love it. So what's your net worth right now? What's your net worth to the world if you take your bad habits and subtract them from your good habits? And I want you to think about right now, what's one bad habit of yours? Whatever that is. Is it multitasking? Is it, um, is it checking your phone too much? Is it getting distracted? Is it uh, needing to be right about things? Is it uh, making ideas more important than relationships? Is it avoiding doing some of the business? 
Is it, what's one bad habit of yours? Is it defending what you know instead of learning what you don't? Is it, um, what is it? What's one bad habit of yours right now? Think about it. And then I want to ask you, do you know what's causing that habit? Do you know the subconscious thought process behind that habit? Because believe it or not, our subconscious is what's driving 100% our bad habits. And I have this picture of these horses up here because the subconscious is kind of like riding a horse. It's not kind of, it is a lot like it. I want you to think about the first time you rode a horse. And you got on this animal and you steer the, throughout the entire day, you steer the animal left, steer it to the right, pull the reins back, the, animal, the horse stops, you kick the horse, it moves. You do that all day long, pretty soon you're thinking what? I'm a cowboy, I got this down. Like I know how to ride a horse. But what happens when the horse stumbles upon a snake or a garden hose or some bob wire? And the horse freaks out and you're on your back and you're like, I thought I was a cowboy. You, the rider of a horse, is like your conscious mind. The subconscious is the horse. You know the horse is in control, but it feels like you're steering it, making it go all these directions. It feels like you're in control. And for the most part, you are. But your subconscious gets triggered by things. It shows up and gets triggered and causes bad habits. Our brains are designed for one thing, to keep us alive more than anything else. So they almost have a bad habit built within them, and it's to look for what's wrong in every situation to keep us alive. Worry is an example of that. I mean, look for what's wrong so that I can keep us alive. Your brain automatically does that. And if you listen to your brain and you don't direct your brain, it'll guide you in all sorts of crazy ways. So subconscious drives this. I'll give you another example of subconscious. A few years ago, I had this hip problem, and my hip was so, I was in so much pain. I couldn't function, I couldn't walk, I couldn't, not at least for very far, I couldn't sleep. I had this massive pain in my hip and I went to the doctor. I said, doc, you gotta help me, like there's something going on. And he did all these tests and after a couple of weeks came back and said, there's nothing wrong with your hip. And I said, but I'm in pain, like beyond pain. And he said, you might be, but it's not your hip. Like it's right here, like there's a problem with my hip. And he said, there's nothing wrong with your hip. So I went and got a second opinion, doc, another doctor told me the same thing. There's nothing wrong with your hip. So I went and saw a physical therapist and I walked in to her office and I said, you got to help me with my hip. There's a massive problem with it. And she said, I can already tell you there's nothing wrong with your hip. And I said, I know I've been told that. And she said, but if there is something wrong with your left foot and specifically the way you walk, I watched you walk in here. There's something wrong with your left foot. And she said that that's the source of your pain. For the next three months, she spent all her energy working on my left foot. I did foot exercises. I did even worked on my toes, like raising my toes and my left foot. She didn't touch my right hip. And I'm like, the pain is here in my right hip. Like, this is the problem. She didn't touch it. She worked on my left foot. And within three months, the pain in my right hip went away. Now, I know some of you have had other experiences like that physically, right? From a physical standpoint. But mentally, it's the same thing. When we have pain somewhere, emotionally or mentally, there's a source. There's something that's causing that problem. There's some subconscious thing that's in the way. And the problem is most of us don't know what it is. Do you know what your subconscious thought processes that are getting in your way? Do you know the blind spots that are creating issues for you in your life, in your relationships, in your business, monetarily, with your emotional well-being, with your enjoyment in life? Do you know what's getting in the way? Do you know the subconscious sabotage? Most people don't. I wasn't aware of my left foot. Had somebody not told me, listen, it's your left foot, I wouldn't have known, right? Because it was my right hip where I was all focused. This is the pain. But the left foot was actually the cause. And that's what 99% of the time, that's what's going on in our lives. There's some subconscious sabotage that's holding us back. So we walk around, you know, with, blind spot and there's danger, right? And we're not sure where we're headed, where we're going. We, we're not aware of our blind spots. We were in an event just recently, or this event with Casey, and um, somebody was there and she said, this says that I'm guarded. And she's looking at an assessment that I'll talk to you about in just a minute. It says, 
it says that I'm guarded, but I don't feel guarded. Like, I don't think this is right. And she said, for the entire time I sat there and looked at this, I went, this assessment's wrong and he's wrong for bringing this because I don't feel guarded. And then she went and talked to three of her best friends and said, hey, am I guarded? And they said, yep. So we don't often see our blind spots. We don't even recognize them. We don't even feel them. And we all have them. Other people might be able to spot them. Sometimes people can't spot them and they're just blind spots that are down below, but they're creating issues. And if we keep heading down that path, there's probably going to be danger. So what if there was a tool? What if there was something that could show you all of your blind spots? There is, and it's based on the science of axiology. Axiology says we know how to value or we know how to we know how a person thinks based on how they value things. Axiology was created by a man by the name of Dr. Hartman, and I'm not going to get all nerdy and sciencey on you about it. It's a scientific assessment, and we're going to give you guys the opportunity to get this report so you can actually see all of the stuff that's going on on paper, the subconscious sabotage. What is it that's getting in your way? What might be holding you back? What might be slowing you down? from getting to that next level, from making more money, from finding more joy, from finding more peace and happiness. And we're gonna measure six primary areas. And I promise you, it'll measure those thought processes as accurately as a thermometer measures the temperature. So your report's gonna have all these colors, green, yellow, orange, red. You'll take the assessment. It literally takes you 10 minutes to take this assessment. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna come back with some of these bars that are green, and green is good, and then some that are yellow and orange, and yellow and orange is not good, and then the red bars are the blind spots. So you guys will take this assessment, and it's absolutely free to take it, but it will literally show you on paper what's going on in your subconscious. It takes 10 minutes to take, and it's not like any assessment you've ever done before. I promise you, it's not a personality assessment, it's not a behavior assessment, it measures how you think. This report, or this, the Hartman Value Profile, is the only assessment in existence that measures how you think, based on a science, the science of axiology. So, here's what you're gonna wanna do. And it looks like somebody's maybe chiming in about the report, they're saying, hey, it's great, or let's see, or it's crazy, or it's kooky. I, I put the, the Oh, she, it's Casey putting in the link, yeah. So. She put in the link, here's the link, take the assessment, and then what we're gonna do is next Sunday evening, I'm gonna go through the assessment with you. You're probably gonna get a phone call from somebody on my team that says, hey, I noticed you took the assessment, I'd love to go through the report with you. You can totally do that and go through it one-on-one -on -one with them, or just say, hey, I'm waiting to go through it with Brandon on Sunday. But you'll probably get a call from my team because they're, they're on it, right? They're, they want to help you understand the report. But if you take it next Sunday, I'll go through it with you and really help you understand not only how to read it, but some of the things that are in your report that are really slowing you down and getting in your way. So this is step one and step two of this entire process that Casey wanted me to give to you guys. And this is all free to you to do. You guys, Brandon is a high level business success coach where people invest thousands of dollars to work with him um, and his time. So take advantage of this um, for yourself, right? That blind spot. Just like, you know, when I came across Brandon, I, I saw him speak for an hour and I was like, oh my gosh, another program, like another coach, like I don't need another thing. I'm overwhelmed <laughs> as it is. I'm not having, I'm not having joy, right? I'm, I'm just stressed. Um, and I took this assessment though to go to the event and then I was, um, when you called me and I was going through it and just the way that you were able to, to pinpoint it out to me, I just did not see the blind spots that I had and I went from just being, oh my gosh, in such a, a dark, dark space in my life to, um, yeah, more productivity, having more fun, feeling freer, being more authentic, residual income increase. I mean, just everything. So, um, I just didn't know what I didn't know. And so you guys don't shortchange yourself, take this assessment 10 minutes. It definitely should not take you more than 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> 
let it take you about 10 minutes. And um, it's so fun too, to have gone back and taken it and seen all the growth um, in areas, still areas to grow, but just the differences. It's, it's just remarkable when you know what's sabotaging you. <laughs> so, yay! I love you. Thank you so much. You guys, take that question. Hold on. Um, good she said Sunday. It's this Sunday. Sorry, I put next Sunday, Joy. Oh. It is this Sunday. Yep, this Sunday, so January 6th at 9 p.m., so just jump back on, and um, I just encourage you guys, you can have it, like, on your phone. Um, I think I, I love having it printed out, but there's uh, one that it'll say once you take it, um, you'll put your email in it, and then just print the assessment, like, just the, the short summary. You don't have to print out, like, the pages and pages, but the 10 pages of the assessment are really great, especially when he's going um, through it, so that you can really reference it um, very easily, so... And there's a really big surprise next Sunday for all you guys, too, that Casey has made way, way awesome. Even those of you that were at the event in Atlanta, and I would make sure you're on for Sunday because there's a huge gift, massive, massive, massive gift that Casey's offered you guys, so or made possible for you guys, I should say. So. Oh, you guys, you know, with our 90 day game plan, we just got off of a team call, um, you know, our biggest event um, of the year, the New Year's kickoff, you know, that people are going to, um, you know, we, for our Isolife success planner, I mean, just the ways to really be able to identify what, you know, what our blind spots are, what our left, left foot has been to our hip, to the pain point, you know, going into the year with all of our goals, all of our things. And my gosh, just to have a freaking good ass time doing it, you know, joy in the journey um, and to be enjoying it and to want to reach out to people, to want to rock out the ISA Life success plan, um, you know, and just all that way. So just, it's just such the perfect timing. So I just, I thank you for your time, Brandon, and for um, doing this uh, for, for us and the team. And yeah, guys, enjoy, take the assessment, take some minutes, see you guys back on Sunday and uh, get ready to have some blind spots revealed. <laughs> Well, oh, thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to Casey for making this happen. Yay. I know you guys have a ton of stuff and she knows you have a ton of stuff and you guys have a company that represents, they give you guys so many things and so much training. Um, and listen, I'm no, I might not be the one to, to help you. There might be somebody else, but I'd love to earn the right to, to, to show you what you might not know so that we can help you move forward. So thank you, Casey, I appreciate oh, it. Yeah, happy January 3rd, everybody. Um, see you guys on Sunday, and uh, can't wait to see a couple of you guys uh, this weekend at some events. So see you guys Sunday. See you guys soon, take dark care. Moon. The dark moon is Sunday, which represents new beginnings. So what a perfect day to have your new beginning on the dark moon. Ah, so, all right. Bye, guys. See you guys. Take care. <laughs> You're getting massive love, Brandon, on the Facebook. Um, Facebook oh, cool. Well too, so. Nice. Thanks, my brother. All right, guys. See, See you, guys. you later. Thanks, Casey. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.